And then, can you go back to the, your note tonight? The 10 marks of happy marriage. 10 marks of happy marriage. Yeah. And 10 marks. Okay. And look like a 10 commandment. Yes, yeah. 10 marks of a happy marriage. Yeah, if you look at the other page, I don't know which page number, but you can see that we studied the uh, you know, marriage is a covenant. Yeah. Just finish marriage is a covenant, and uh, you can see the number four, the ten mark of happy marriage. Okay. <coughs> okay, marriage is a natural way of uh, preventing us uh, fighting with uh, strangers. Definition of marriage is a covenantal relationship between a man and woman in an emotional, physical, moral, and spiritual union and exclusively and for life. The husband and wife take each other and forsake all others. Do you know, marriage is a two strange men, strange women, they live together in harmony and unity. You know, there's a man and woman in an emotional, physical, moral, in a spiritual union, all the, you know, it's for life, for life. Not for five years or ten years or twenty years, no, for life. We have heard about some marriage being made in heaven. Marriage is not just an arrangement to clarify the inheritance. It has been called a dramatic act in which two strangers come together to define the themselves. The ten mark of happy marriage are. Do you understand that? Two strange men and women married together, live in how much unity for life. That is a miracle, actually. How many of your mother and father are still alive? How many of your father and mother still live together in harmony and unity? Well done. Praise God. Well done. I said, well done. Keep on praying for your mother. Yeah, keep on praying for them. <laughs> you never see them, your mommy and daddy, some people. No, they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Just my dad is dead. Yes. But look, number one, commitment. Did you see your mommy or daddy's commitment? Ten marks of a happy marriage. Yeah, number one, commitment. Some couple like their wedding service to be traditional. Others are free, but three Solomon declaration must be there somewhere. I am not married to anyone else. I take you the name to be my lawful wedding wife or husband. For sake of all, all others, I will be lovingly committed to you for life. Do you know marriage is a commitment. Number one mark of happy marriage, commitment to each other. Yeah, commitment. And then you can see. When I counsel, you know, this counseling for couple before marriage, we talk about their vows. They usually compose their own. Some young people are wary of, wary of a commitment and view marriage as a trap. But you can't have a satisfying marriage relationship without a commitment. Yeah. Do you want to see the satisfying marriage in your life? Yeah. But without the commitment, there is no. A commitment of one imperfect person to another imperfect person. Marriage is not simply a 50-50 affair. It is 100% to give. Both ways. Commitment is more than to permanence uh, or sexual uh, partnership. For yeah. Christian, commitment is not just being there year after year in the easy chair. No. It is more than the promise not to go away. It ought to include, above all, commitment to grow, to become the persons God intends us to be. Growing couples set growing goals. 
to read the good books and discuss it, to go away every year on a retreat, to pray together, to a course together. One couple said in the wedding vows, in this marriage, I want to grow as a person. I want to help you grow as a person. And I want to see our relationship of love, companionship, and support grow deeper and larger and stronger with the help of God. I come to myself to that. Commitment. Do you know if your husband no commitment to wife, wife no commitment to, to husband, there's no grow. You have to have the same goal. Growing couples. Growing. Do you understand? Not just married for 10 years or 20 years. Growing together. When the husband grows spiritually, mentally, and the knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ, we have to grow together. Can you look at the Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 25? Ephesians 5, yeah? Somebody read for me Ephesians 5, 25, sorry, 22 to 25. Ephesians chapter 5, 22 to 25. Wife, submit, your, <coughs> submit to your husband as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the <coughs> Savior. To what? Until 25. <coughs> now as the church, submit to Christ. So also wives should submit to their husband and everything. Husband, love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her. Yeah. 28, same chapter 28. Ephesians 5, 28 or so. In the same way, husband ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He will love his wife, love himself. Thank you. What is committee mother required from wife? Wives. Verse 22, submit to your husband, and to the Lord. This is a commitment. And husband, love your wife. And Christ is a love the church. Jesus died for the church. This is a commitment. Do you understand? <coughs> Without a commitment, there is no possible to build up the house. Commitment. There's duty. Commitment is not optional. You have to do it. Do you understand? Wives submit to husband. Husband, love your wife. This is a commitment. Unfortunately, in these days, people, they don't want to commitment. You know, I saw that many couples in UK, they live together uh, as your boyfriend and girlfriend, but they already have children. And how long you live together? There's over 10 years. The children are seven and eight. And why you don't get married? You know what they say? We don't want to, we don't want to get uh, some commitment. <laughs> do you know, if you get married, do you know what happened? In future, they divorce, what happened? Very complicated, financially. That is why they don't want to get married. Do you understand? People, they don't want to give the commitment to husband and to the wife. That is, therefore, they don't want to marry. They just live together. And your boyfriend, girlfriend. They even they have children. Easy to meet and easy to go. Do you know, have you seen this kind of people yet? You saw that. In London. Many. I encourage the, one of our, you know, our missionaries' uh, son. And they, they, their son is uh, ma uh, not married. They live together for 10 years. I say, why don't marry? You know, exact same. We don't want to, you know, get uh, some burden. If we get married, then, for example, in our future divorce, we'll be struggle. I don't want to see this happen. Therefore, we don't get married from the beginning. They, they want to live together. But I challenge them, get married, get married. That they're married now. <laughs> they give the commitment to each other. Commitment is very important. Do you know Jesus died for the church? It's a commitment. 
Do you know what Jesus said on the cross? He said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. What does it mean? No, so Father, why do you forsake me? Yeah, my God, my God, why do you forsake me? Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That means, oh, it's so hard to die on the cross. But he fulfilled God's call. He fulfilled God's requirement. He fulfilled his mission. Say it is finished. It's done. Finish. Yeah. Therefore, if you see the happy marriage, a blessing marriage, and the wonderful marriage in Christ Jesus, God encouraged husband and wife. Both of you give a commitment to one another. Yeah. Number two, loving acceptance. Can you look at Romans five verse eight? Romans five verse eight. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ, Christ died for us. Died for us. Died for us. While we are still sinners, Jesus died for you. You know what God wants to do? He wants to encourage you to accept. While we are still sinners, he died for you. Yeah. Look at your know The most fundamental idea in Christianity is about the grace. I am loved before I change. Do you know that? Do you think when you become a different man and God accepts you? No. Why are you still sinners? <coughs> yeah. God loves you and me as I am and who you are. This is a good news actually. He doesn't love anyone else more than he loves me. And nothing I can do can increase his love for me. Our society, on the other hand, teach us that worth is something you earn. You understand, when you're married, you have to accept one another. Accept your husband as he is. Accept your wife as she is. How many of husband and wife try to change their husband and wife? They never success. <laughs> you know, I'm a married man. <laughs> I already give a long time. <laughs> it's not my job. My job is only pray. His job to do something for my wife. You know, my wife already give up for me. You know, if my wife tried to change me, she would be big trouble. <laughs> Same thing. Not only my wife and myself. Everybody. Do you know you have to accept one another as she is, as he is, as Jesus accept you, as you are. How many of you, how many of you uh, receive the grace as you, uh, while you are still sinners? Yeah. While I was still sinners, he came to me. Do you understand? Jesus came to our heart, our life. You know, most of religion look like we come to their, uh, you know, their God, their uh, like their religion. You know, Buddhist, we come to Mr. Buddha. Muslims come to Allah. Hindus, all their own God. But Christian is different. Jesus came to you. This is good news. It's not wonderful. While you are still sinners, Jesus came to you touch you, encourage you, and save you, and deliver you. That is good news. But can you learn something from the principle of Lord Jesus Christ? Can you accept your husband, your wife, as they are? Yeah. If you say, if my, if, if, for example, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, if this boyfriend changes this behavior, and then I will get married this man. Please forget. <laughs> Never change. If this woman changes her behavior like this and then <coughs> I'll get married with this woman. No. Never change. But if you open your heart and God give you grace, you accept this woman as she is. And and he is. And that's the you know, 
second principle to get a wonderful family, love, acceptance. Mm -hmm. Your mom, your daddy. Pray for your mommy and your daddy. If your mommy and daddy try to change both of each other, no, it never work. They accept one. Number three, respect. Look at the Psalm 139, verse 14. Psalm 139. Book of Psalms is beautiful, especially Psalm 139 is the most beautiful Psalms. 139. <laughs> Which one of it should I read? Psalm 139. Yeah, which, which verse is? Verse 14. Verse 14. Yeah. I, will, I will praise ye, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Thank you. Here's an NIV Bible, this one. Psalm 139, verse 14 say, I praise you because I am fearfully, wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. How God made you? Wonderfully. Wonderfully and fearfully. Can you say to each other, God made you wonderfully, fearfully. Say to each other, God made you wonderfully. He's not one, he's wonderful. God made you wonderfully. Praise God. Do you think God made you ugly? God made you terribly ugly? No. God made you wonderfully, beautifully, in His image. Wonderful. Yeah. Beautifully. You know, that is why, you know, soon writer is actually, David say, David say, I praise you, Almighty God, because you, you, you made me, I am f fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. You made me. And he said, I know that full well. Do you know that God made you wonderfully, fearfully, beautifully? How God made you? Can you say to each other, God made you beautifully? Say to each other, God made you beautifully. Yeah, don't say to your brother, sister, you're ugly, you are. You know, don't look beautifully, wonderfully made. God's image. Therefore, look, look at you. If acceptance and love are reaction to sinning others. Respect is our response, response to others. God's likeness. Do you know God's likeness? God's image. The person we are relating to is made in God's image. He and she is like God. So I should treat my suppose with uh, courtesy and, and dignity even when I don't feel like it. It is habitable, helpful is uh, actually feed respect. It is an honor to serve one who is like God. Our fundamental human need is a true deep love of a self, a genuine and joy, joyful self-acceptance. The marriage calls upon us to transcend that need, the partner's need and the ple pleasure must take equal if not superior statue to our own. We have to accept one another and we have to respect one another. Yeah. Can you respect? Because uh, your brothers, sisters, they have the image of God. Yeah. This is not only principle of the human marriage. It's, it's principle in while you live in this world. <coughs> yeah. You know how the people start a new life? Yeah, especially homeless, drug and alcoholic, these people, most of the people, they don't respect <coughs> this kind of people. Oh, you're homeless, you're alcoholic. They don't respect. But if you respect them where they are, just like that they're homeless and drug or whatever, if you respect them, that is a starting point to change their life. Yeah. Can you say to each other, let us respect one another, say to each other, let us respect, respect one another. Amen. When you respect, something happens. I know. No. Some homeless, if I call it drug addict, they respect me. Because of, I respect them. You know, homeless, a drug addict, they stay in our church three months or four months. And I did my best to support them for them with respect and care and love. But 
Some people don't respect, I know that, but most of them, they respect. Most of them. And then respect one another in, in family. When you respect one another, there's a grace and mercy uh, working in their family. You know, most uh, most harmful harmful thing in the family, parents, mommy and daddy fighting without the respect in front of the children. That's very dangerous in the family. How many of you parents, your mommy and daddy fighting in front of you? How did you feel? Hmm? I'm asking. <laughs> it's not very nice. It's it's not very nice. Very hard. Yeah. Actually, your children want to learn away from 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 house when the parents fighting and argue when they don't respect each other. I know the one Korean pastor is the pastor Kim. He's the most famous counselor in South Korea. And he went to America to study the counselling. Actually, what he what he saw. His father and mother fighting each other many, many years. Therefore, when he married, you know what happened? He's a pastor, he's a missionary, he's a you know, Christian, and he made decide before God, I never ever want to fight with my wife, especially in front of my children. He prayed to God. This is a, <coughs> is a promise before God. But you know what happened? When he was in America, he studying to get a PhD degree in America. One day, big argument with his wife. Do you know what was happening? <laughs> <laughs> Not only argue, he was wrestling with his wife. <laughs> and he was on the top of his wife and wrestling. And then, at the three years old, his daughter, three years his old daughter touched his leg. And touch it like this. Do you know his, his daughter's uh, face is uh, her lips is a blue color. And then she said, instead of she called uh, daddy, she said, dad, 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 like this. And uh, while he was wrestling, and he looked at uh, and his daughter cried. Dad, dad. Do you know what he said? I saw this happening many, many times when I was a child. My father must be fighting. But now what I'm doing? I'm exactly the same like my father's, father's behavior. You know what he did? <laughs> he, he kneeled down and uh, he cried to God, Lord, I'm so sorry. I, I repent of my sins. He's here. He, he followed his father's step. And that is a curse, actually. Do you know, if there is no you know, spirit of a moving, then they don't respect each other. We need to kick out uh, this kind of uh, disunity, this demonic power. Respect one another. Can you lift up your holy hand? Can you say after me, in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. I want to commit. I'm to, Jesus. to Jesus. I'm going to give love for my brothers and sisters. I'm going to respect to my family in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you respect your family, your mommy and your daddy, your brothers and sisters? Unfortunately, parents, they don't respect their children. Children is not your toy. Children is a children of God. Your children is not yours. <clears throat> Your children is a belong to God. God give you some job to serve your children. What is your job? You have a stewardship to serving your children, to supporting for your children, to bless them, correct them, teach them, rebuke them in the eyes of the Lord. To supporting, build up their life with the word of God. Let them fear God. What is the beginning of wisdom? Fear of the Lord. Pray to God for your children. Oh Lord, would you put the fear of God in their heart? If your children have the fear of God in their heart, there's the best prayer request actually. Pray to God for your children. 
That time you have the fear of God. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of what? Wisdom. Yeah. Respect for one another. Number four. Maturity and responsibility. Can you look at the uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. 1 Timothy <clears throat> 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. Somebody read for me. But if any provide not for his own and especially for those of his own house he hath denied the faith mm. and is worth, worse than an infidel. Yeah. If you claim that I'm a born again Christian, but you don't support it for your family, if you you don't responsible man and woman for your family, you are the one denying the faith and worse than the unbeliever. Can you imagine? Non Christian is much better than you sometimes. Yeah? Non Christian supporting for their family, financially, emotionally, physically. Be responsible. Look at the note and um, maturity and the responsibility are necessary for the resolving difference, caring to the promise and sharing finance and for modeling, modeling a Christian lifestyle for our children. If the motivation for the marriage is to live happy ever after, we are setting ourselves up for trouble. While you marry, looking for only happiness, live happy, after, after, no, for holy life, holy life, be holy, because Jesus is holy. If you can into the marriage unhappy chance, uh, you will stay that away. Happiness is a byproduct of self-respect. Yeah. <coughs> Solving problem responsibility and doing worthwhile, interesting and useful things. We have to respond to each other's respond. Bless one another. Yeah. Look after your family. Yeah. Sharing the finance. I know the I know the one family, the husband is not look after the family financially. Family is a strong. Husband is job. Hus do you know what is husband's job? Husband is a look at the family, wife and children, financially, properly. Yeah. I'm a husband. I'm a man. Man is the one, the child, to look at the family. Do you remember when Adam and Eve come to the seas? What kind of uh, the judgment come upon them for the ladies? Childbirth pains. Childbirth in pain. And? I submit to the husband. Submit to the husband. And? What is the, the judgment for the woman? Can you go back to the Genesis chapter 3? You can see that. You know, this is, uh, you can see the <coughs> what God has done for this Adam and Eve who have to the, come to the sins. Genesis chapter 3, which verse is it? 15, 16. Yeah, verse 14. And then, yeah. Yeah. So it says, To the woman I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy perception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and yeah. he shall rule over thee. Yeah. Three things for women. What is the three things? Childbirth with pain, number one. What is number two? Your desire will be for your husband. What is your desire? You're looking for your husband. I mean, desire. Love your husband. What is number three? He will rule over you. Will rule over you. Do you understand? Today we study together at the Bible College. You know, actual desire of God is equal. Husband and wife equal. But after the committed the sins, the woman conceive the baby and deliver the baby in pain. Number two, desire for husband. Number three, Husband, rule over you. These three judgment from God. How about the man? What is the man? 
what does that mean? Because you listen to your own wife and ate from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat of it. Cursed the ground because you through pain, full toil you will eat of it all the days of your life. It will produce thorn and thistle for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. Okay, what is the uh, judgment for the for the man? Working hard, well, like hard, a, difficult. Work. Yeah, you will sweat. You are working very hard. How many judgment for men? Only one. Woman is how many? Three. Three. You understand? But unfortunately, man, you know, if a man is not working very hard, there's a curse actually. When God, you know, judges the you know, man and woman, <coughs> after that, man must be working very hard for the family. Have you seen that some man is not working and wife working and man is looking like housewife? Have you seen? The family is a total opposite to man. <coughs> man is relaxed in the house and look at the baby and wife working very hard in the office in the, in the outside. He's opposite to man. <laughs> but this, you know, after God judged uh, Adam and Eve, Man should work. Woman strong, uh, housewife and look at the children. This is a proper way. Unfortunately, because we live in the end time, now husband and wife working very hard now. Who look at the children? Is a nanny look at the children. Do you know that in UK, in London especially, if you have the children, yeah, if you have a full time job, how many, how, how much money, how many percentage of your your money go for your children? Anybody know? Oh, no. oh. Over 60 percent of your income uh, spend money for the children. Very expensive to look at the children. Even sometimes 70 percent. Depends on your earnings. It yeah. Might be more. Yeah. Depends this on will be. Mind you are, you are. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> weird. Some children do, uh, studying in the in the in the where uh, private school. Have you seen that some some very pro famous private school? When they conceive the baby, yeah, three weeks or five weeks, and then give the name list for to go to that school. So look, maturity and responsibility. Number five, intimacy. Can you look at the John chapter fifteen, verse fifteen? John fifteen, fifteen. Somebody read for me. No longer do I call you servant, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. <coughs> but I called you friend, for all I have had, and the Father I have made him known to you. Yeah. You know, I have called you, what? Friend. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. No more servant. You know, when you and Jesus have a friendly relationship, he share everything. How many you have a friend? Do you have a friend? You share. Yeah. You share and then how you friend, eh? you share your heart to each other. When you have a friend, you share. Jesus say, I called you, you are my friend now. Do you have that kind of intimate relationship? Husband, wife, friend. Open your heart to share. Look at your Lord. Marriage is an uh, incarnation. When God wants to communicate, his love for us. He sent Jesus to embody that love. Jesus loved people like God loves us. God loves us before we deserve to be loved. He loves us even though he knows us intimately. So it is a good marriage when we are utterly uh, trans transparent with one another. We have already promised to love for better and for worse. We learn to know and love the water with the uh, imperfection and, and fault, not after the Im immoral. Here we must be very honest. Most women are engaged in lifelong search for a strong, nurturing uh, father figure. Most men marry the wife to find a responsible, nurturing mother figure. Now we are allowed to have your own feeling about all this and to express them feeling are neither right 
all wrong. Yeah. Do you know when when you have the I don't know you already married the woman. Do you know in a wedding day you love for each other's for better and for worse. They say amen. <laughs> they agree. When they were better, they are okay. But when they were worse, they were willing to divorce. They were willing to finish. They shouldn't. Do you have that kind of relationship? Yeah. Number six. Look at the Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Complete dissolution. Dissolution. Yeah? There is a problem in the family. Yeah, don't tell me, oh, our family is a perfect family. No, there's no perfect family. I like this morning, the Brother Mark, he speak. You know, when God made heaven and earth, God made everything. When God made heaven and earth, when he made all this creation, what can I say? It was what? It was good. And then when God made the human being, Adam and Eve, what did he say? Very good. He said it was very good. You understand? When God made the creation, he said it was good. And when God made the human being, he said it was very good. Did not God not say it was perfect? Not perfect. What is different? <laughs> perfect and it was very good. What is different? Big difference. Big difference. Human being not perfect. It was very good. Which mean it was very good mean there's a room to grow. Do you understand? If God said it was perfect, there's no room to grow. You have to grow up. Do you understand? Imperfect person to marry with imperfect person. But still God said it was good. That means you need to grow. Look at the Matthew 11, 29. Somebody read for me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest unto your soul. Thank you. Do you know Jesus said, learn from me. Take my yoke. Yeah? I'm humble and gentle. If you don't have the humble and gentle in the family, the family shaken. Not strong. Have humble and gentle. Jesus said, learn from me. I am humble and gentle. Look, a survey among 700 marriage counselors found that communication broke down had the least of material problems followed by loss of shared goals and interests. Do you know communication problem? Number one, do you know what is the main problem? Their interests are broke down. Their goals are different. Husband's goal follows Jesus. Wife's goal follows the world. Break. Do you understand? Same goal. I will follow Jesus. Husband said, I will follow Jesus. Wife said, I will follow Jesus. Same goal. How wonderful. But if you take different goal, it's a big trouble. Even sexual incompatibility. Uh, 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 yeah. Sexually is different. Do you know there's some uh, couple, they divorce. 60 years old, man and woman divorce. Sexually now, you're not interested, and they divorce. Infidelity. Excitement. There are more, no more excitement. And fun leaving the marriage. Money, conflict about the children. Because of children problem, they divorce. Money problem, they divorce. Alcohol, drug abuse. You saw that in these days. You know, we, we helped the one, one the Scots guy last year. He was homeless for two years because of alcohol. And then this one kicking out because of alcohol. Drugs. Women's equality issues. And the, the, in the law, conflict arises because we bring different uh, bio, uh, biographies, need, interests, values, the lifestyle to our marriage. And treasure for the uh, conflict uh, explosion may include the loss of a job. Some couple divorce because the husband lost a job. And the arrival of a new baby. When the baby born, Oh, they don't know how to get the baby. And then they, you know, complete. They fight each other because of baby. And they divorce. Do you understand? They surveyed 700 marriage couples. And then 
is a, a difficult. And then um, illness. Do you understand? When husband or wife is a meal, instead of their compassion, they look at each other. Oh, my husband has sickness and then run away. I saw this kind of happen. Moving to a new house. You know, when they move into a new house, it's a different environment than divorce. Taking an uh, aged parents into the, the home, exactly. You know, when the parents are to stay in the house, <clears throat> there's a tension in there. And marriage broke down, do not happen because of the difference. They happen because of the couple can't handle those differences. Do you understand? Every couple has a difference. Husband and wife, not same. Different character, different background. But main problem is they don't know how to handle. They don't know how to overcome. That is why they divorce. Do you understand? Look at the next page. Relationship do not cause uh, conflict. They bring out uh, whatever in competence. Uh, we have with, within us anyway. Conflict is a contest of wills. But it ought to not to be abused as a power struggle or as a question of who is right or wrong. Gentle or straight, or straight feelings is called for speaking the truth in love, asking about the feeling that underlying and the difficulty. And don't complain too much. Your forcing can be viewed as a trouble by the other. Do you understand? There is a difficulty in the household how to overcome. If you continually complain again and again and again, there's no end. If you, you know, telling the truth in love, not all the time, continually, just once and then keep on praying. Therefore, I know the principle how to overcome this uh, in a complete love from Jesus. Come to me, who has got a very burden, I will give you rest. Learn from me. I'm a humble and gentle. I'm humble and gentle. You learn from me, what Jesus said. Number seven. You're going to finish the number ten, okay? Within ten minutes, yeah? Number seven, money. Can you look at the uh, Matthew chapter six, verse twenty-one? Matthew six, verse twenty-one. For where your treasure is, there your heart also will be. Yeah, where your money is, your heart is. Yeah, verse 24 also, same chapter. Matthew 6, No 24. man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and yeah. love the other, or else he will hold to the one <coughs> and despise the other. Yeah, we cannot you serve God and mammon. Yeah, you cannot serve the two masters in the family, money and God. No, only Jesus you can serve in your household. And then um, put Jesus first. Actually, like look, the silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. Haggai chapter 2, verse 8. We are joint stewards. And within Him, our home, our savings, our you know, possessions. We, have, we happen to believe that joint bank, to, uh, bank account in the appropriate uh, 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 token of our togetherness. So we always had one. In one, one bank account. One. When money is tied, the couple fight. Yeah? When there's not enough money, big fight, argue. And then ex-wife and thoughtfully, they won't have the incompatibility as long as he has income and she has a uh, compatibility. Grow up and plan together. Be willing occasionally to touch up the plan and circumstance change and the decide maturely to live <coughs> more simply. Because of a money problem, many couples struggle. Finance struggle is a this big damage in the house. In ninety when is the IMF in Korea? Ninety 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 seven. Ninety ninety seven. Many Korean you know husband lost a job. Many. When the economy crashed in South Korea, do you know what happened? The husband lost the job. 
and do you want to have a husband or doing they lose a job they can't bring any more money for their family they are guilty oh i'm a man i cannot look after my wife and my children because i lose my job what they do they drink they cannot go back to their home where they sleep they sleep on the street and then when the husband sleep on the street the wife looking for husband and the husband become a drunk alcoholic and become homeless unemployed so many couples and family destroyed when the finance crash come no only in the korea every country in the world when the finance really struggle many many country get damage special family damage therefore it's nothing wrong to be prepared for your future you know saving money is a is good news for your future but uh, you know very important uh, while you live in this world uh, yeah put God first we're going to study also and uh, you need to know how to handle the money how to control the money you don't need to serve money serve Jesus when you serve Jesus and you know how to control the money but please you have to live more simply more simply and that uh, you know how to overcome the finance situation I was in the broader community their life is so simple they don't need uh, many clock a few clock but same clock everybody same clock And do you know what they do? They they make it as a mark for every people. They they make it as a name tag on the ear. Even underpants, <laughs> even underpants is you know almost the same. <laughs> and they put the name by name 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 tag. Simple. I telling you in the last day to overcome the financial difficulties, live simply. Can you say amen? It's good news for you. When you live simply, it's good news. You, you, can know, you know how to overcome. That is why when Jesus said, you know, when the tribulation comes, how does he come? Go to the mountain. What does he mean go to the mountain? You don't need to rely on the society. Yeah, mountain, there's nothing on the mountain. You can survive. Only rely on God. Look at the number eight. Gender, rules, and sex. Look at the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 to 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 to 5. If you have a single gift, yeah, you may understand what the Bible says. Paul, Paul, he was a member of Sanhedrin. Do you know Sanhedrin? Sanhedrin, do you know how many Sanhedrin? 72 Sanhedrin. Members. Even now in, in Israel, they made uh, 72 Sanhedrin members. Paul, he was a vulnerable member of Sanhedrin. Do you know, according to historic book, do you know, anybody want to become a member of Sanhedrin, they must marry. Married men to become a member of Sanhedrin. Which means, Paul, he was a married man. And he then, was married. Paul, opposed to Paul. And then, because he was a member of Sanhedrin. And then, actually, another some historical book supporting Paul. Paul, his wife become a mother. Oh, Paul, Paul's wife. What very early on? Yeah, when he become a born again Christian, and his wife or Paul or her husband, and she become born again, and people kill her. This is uh, some other historical book speak about uh, uh, Paul's wife. And then, if you understand the uh, one Corinthians chapter seven. He knew the marriage couple very well. If a single man, single man understand this kind of marriage is, is a miracle actually. But this man, Paul, he had the experience of marriage. Look, chapter 7, verse 1 to 5. Now for the matter you talked about, it is good for a man not to marry. But since there is so much immorality, Each man should have his own wife, and each woman her <coughs> own husband. The husband should fulfill his uh, marital duty to his wife, and likewise his w the wife to her husband. The wife's body does not belong to her alone, but as the, as to the, her husband. In the same way, the husband's body does not belong to him alone, 
but also to his wife. Do not uh, deprive each other except by mutual consent and for a time, so that you may devote yourself to prayer. Then come together again so that Satan will not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. You know, Paul, he knows what does the uh, meaning of married, and especially people lost to get married. And the husband, uh, your body not belong to you only. Your body belong to whom? No. Your wife. wife yeah. Your wife. You, why? You, your body not belong to yourself. Belong to your husband. This is the meaning. Look, most, uh, look at the, you know, sex is a part of God's creation which he pronounced very good. Genesis chapter 1 verse 31. Sexual relations are more than physical. They are also emotional, spiritual, and moral. Do you know that? Yeah? More than physical. Emotional, spiritual, and moral. In Corinthians chapter 7 verse 1 to 5, Paul talks about the willing surrender of husband and wife to each other to create a coupleness. Sex is is more than the union of bodies. It is also about the rules. So chop them out. <laughs> With women freer or freer to pursue a career, lower, lower expectations by men of women and women of men are dramatically changing. Yeah. I know if you have the you know, single gift, which means you don't need interesting to Many with somebody. I mean, sexually, you don't interest it at all. That kind of man and woman, I think you can leave it. You think it's good for you. And look at the number nine, spirituality. Look at the Matthew 6, verse 33. Matthew 6, verse 33. You know that scripture very well. Seeking first kingdom his kingdom man, his and his righteousness. Right. And all these right. things shall be done to you. Matthew 6, verse 33, spirituality. God was the first man to celebrate. Try to worship together regularly. Pray with and for each other. Yes, though you pray together, much more like to stay together. Do you know, husband and wife pray together. Yeah, pray. Pray is a spiritual thing, isn't it? <coughs> spirituality. And then having a Christian. Uh, commitment that is both real and similar to each other is a healthy indicator of future uh, marital harmony. You know, husband willing to go to church and worship in God, wife don't want to go. Trouble. Wife willing to go to church and worship in God, husband don't want to go. Trouble in the household. Yeah. However, when one is uh, committed to church going Christian and other isn't, there is usually not uh, invariably trouble. Talk that about uh, every, uh, sorry, very, very carefully before you marry. Do you understand? Therefore, do not, you know, uh, yoke together with a non-believer from the beginning. If your partner is not born again, forget about the marriage, please. If you're more, uh, born again Christian and then is a you know, in the beginning, you can you can open your heart. But if that man and woman is not ma uh, not born again, please forget. Don't yoke together with unbeliever. In a truly Christian marriage, is all of the priority always is God first, so first or second, children third, church job next. But in a well order and a committed life, all this love each uh, in each and one another. God first. Second is wife and husband second. Third is children. Number four, the church you are, you know, your job. Yeah. Finally, number ten, have a regular marriage checkup. You have to check up your life regularly before God. Can you look at the Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 21? You can check by the word of God. And Colossians chapter 3, verse 18 to 21. 
wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands, yeah. as it is fit in the Lord. Mm. Husbands, love your wives mm. and be not bitter against them. Mm. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well pleasing unto the Lord. Mm. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Thank you. Servants, obey. Until 21, it's about family, yeah? You can see okay. the wife submit to your husband. Husband, love your wife. Children, obey your parents. Fathers, do not embitter your children. Yeah? For earlier. Wives, submit your husband. Husband, love your wife. Children, obey your parents. Parents, what the parents say, verse 21? Don't anger your children. Yeah? Don't anger the children. Yeah. Unfortunately, some parents are making them angry. <laughs> Disturbing the children. I was very angry. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? We have the check, check, checklist actually. You know, Colossians chapter 3, verse 18, 20 is checklist for your father and mother, for yourself, for your husband, for your wife. You can check. Having a regular manager checkup as a manager in Richmond encounter weekend or with the counselor. It's good to have a counselor. The, the issues include what our, uh, are our feelings about each other at the moment and uh, those close to us, how much quality time should we have within our family. And remember, a good marriage is both what? You see? It's both necessary and miracle. Yeah. <laughs> Do you agree? I agree. A good marriage is both a mystery and miracle. Mm -hmm. It's a miracle. I don't know about your family. My father and mother, they live almost 50 years, over 50 years. My father be with the Lord Jesus now, and uh, he's in heaven. And uh, thank God. Of course, I saw many hardships, my father and mother. Praise God. But uh, they don't divorce, and they bless one another. I learned great things from my father and mother. And uh, if you don't see some good example from your parents, you are the one to make a good example for your next generation. We saw this uh, 10 marks happy marriage, which is a blessing and wonderful marriage. Shall you pray together? Uh, any other area of your family still struggle, you can pray over them. Let us pray together. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you.